as a child, the freedom you had compared to what kids have today was something else. Everybody knew each other and helped each other out if they, you know, if anyone needed it. It was the happiest, happiest, happiest childhood. It was the friendship. It was the stick-togetherness of the community. We were isolated. This was beautiful. It was something out of a story was. Enjoyed every bit of time I was there. Actually, kids sort of ran wild in the village. I just loved living there. I still have very, very fond memories of Bamberton. Off the Trans-Canada Highway, we had our own private road in down through the village. In fact, it was the only way to get into Bamberton other than by water. It came down through the, the village where the, the company houses were, where we lived. And there was a bus shed at the top of the road where you could sit in there to wait for a bus, whether it was going to school or just going to town shopping. I'm Bob Jeffrey. Uh, I lived in Bamberton from 1952 to 1963. So my name is Winnie Jeffrey and I grew up at Bamberton from about the age of one until about 13. My name is M. Blatchford and I was born in Bamberton in 1927. I'm Rosemary Gibson. I was Rosemary Leeson. I was born at Bamberton, well, I was born physically in Victoria, but I lived at Bamberton. Uh, Agnes Margaret Fish was my original name. And uh, then I, as I grew up, I got married, and I'm, my name is McWinnie now. Well, I arrived in Bamberton. I don't uh, remember it, of course. I was only about three years old. My name is Anne Fairclough. Uh, my name was Anne Brunt, and I was a resident of Bamberton for 19 years. My name is Terry Brunt, Terence James Brunt. I was born in King's Daughters Hospital on February the 8th, 1943. From there, I was brought home as a new baby to Bamberton. Uh, Jack Wright, uh, I was born in Cassidy, B.C. We moved to Bamberton uh, when I was a year old in 1932. Um, I'm Peggy Burnside, and I live in Sydney now. I lived in Bamberton from 1942 to 1951. My name's Heather McKenzie, and I moved into Bamberton as a resident in October of 1956, just before my third birthday. My name is Laurel Jane Kennard, but it was Zelinsky, and uh, I go by Jane, because my father called me Jane. that. Yeah, my name was Mary Ann Lang, now married. I was Mary Ann Zelinsky, and I was born in 1953, and my father grew up in Baverton, so we moved back there in 1955. My full name is Jacqueline Helen McCall Robertson, happiest, happiest, happiest childhood. Looking back on it now, that I can, what I can remember about it, and so I'm, I'm known as one of the Bamberton brats. The rope swing, the teepee, and the forts we built. The years have stolen them away. The teeter totters and the squeaking swings at the base of Green Hill. I see the faces of my friends, I hear the squeaking still. We used to call it the big, the, the, the big hill. It was about the, in the mi middle of the village, and uh, from there down was the, was the plant. And uh, I can remember it as being uh, quite a place. I went back last, I think it was last year, we went to, the, they had a reunion, and it didn't look the same at all. <laughs> That, we were scared of that, you know, that uh, the top of the hill was flat and uh, there was moss and, and grass and that on it and we, we played up there and parts, we made forts on one side and yeah, we played up there all the time. Of course, we were just little nippers and, and it, was, it, was, it, was, it was a good sized hill, I guess, and we'd get, get in our, our wagons and that and get in the, uh, the top and down we go and then we just grab the handle and pull it, heave up the bank again, and didn't think anything of it. We were happy as anything. It, uh, 
we, we were outdoor people all the time, like, you know, first thing after breakfast, we were outside and we didn't come inside until it was lunchtime. <laughs> yeah, when I thought the big hill, and I, when I saw the big hill, that's not the big hill. Are you sure we're in the right place? Because it didn't look big at all. But it was big to us kids. <laughs> but I guess we thought we were climbing mountains and we were allowed to go there and we didn't have to have somebody take us. And I don't know, it just was a neat place to be. There was a swing on the green hill. It was off an arbutus tree. And it hung out over the rocks and had a big rope on it. The, bo the boys hung it up. And we, they used to you know, dare each other to swing out. And we weren't allowed on it. But we went. Kids sort of ran wild in the village. Not wild as in get in trouble, but you know, we really we're really close part to nature. Of, part of nature. And Green Hill was a great yes. place and built forts and we were, ate green apples. and Everybody played with everybody. It's, it wasn't like uh, uh, where my kids have grown up and there's somebody two years younger they don't know. I knew everybody from really young to, to, you know, grade 10, 11. But if it had anything to do with the kids, you knew. Because we just all hung out. No, there was no rank. If there was anything, it was age. You know, these were the older kids, and they said, don't do this. And, and it filtered down from there. And then you lorded it over. Your sister lorded it over you. You, you sort of were over your brother, and then the younger ones down. We'd be up on the top of Green Hill, and. You know, the Hardy Boys were a big thing in those days, and we used to read the Hardy Boys, and we'd pretend to be people from the Hardy Boys movie, or, you know, books, and and play out scenes, and, oh, well, I've just read this one, and this is what happened, and so we would make believe that's what we were, and Green Hill was a great place to do it.